Okay, so just reviewing um, the Blitz section of the games that we've played since April, I believe. And what we're looking at is this um, mystical 75%. The 75% whereby basically um, you're either advantaged but disadvantaged because you've made an error, but you've just won because the opponent didn't take the advantage of um, your error. And also looking at the aspect of, yeah, clear wins. Um, how we, did we win them advantageously all the way through the game? Um, which ones were won on time? And which ones were basically got through by the skin of our teeth, in a sense, and maybe just scrabbling around and um, the opponent just didn't take advantage of whatever advantage they had. So the 75% covers quite a lot of um, ground within the errors that I personally can make as a chess player. I'm hoping that the 25% is the 25% whereby um, I'm playing really good and there's no real issues with those games. But it's the 75% whereby it could go either way and we want to look at how we can improve those, you know, were they draws? Did we drag a draw out when really we didn't deserve to win? And did we lose when we should have won? So that 75% really is what I'm looking at. So I'm going to take a look through all of the games and just um, have a look and see if there's anything that we could have done uh, a little bit better. So we shall dive in on this first game. And we're playing as black. So we push through. I'm not going to labour on anything. I just want to see if there's any massive outstanding dips. This gauge bar is so slow. I thought they'd actually speeded it up, but um, we'll see. Knight comes through. And we've got a few stars here. I'm not sure we're going to get all this every time. I'm not going to do a game review on every one. I think I've set a game review for this, so this is why it's showing these. So brought that through. Feeling fairly okay with that at the moment. We are looking for the areas that we want to improve on. We're not here to celebrate any um, showboating. Bishop comes through. Castles. Tuck the bishop. Okay, is the gauge bar actually moving? Yes, it's moving. So it's showing a slight advantage, 0.4, but that's neither here nor there. So not going to lose any sleep over that. It's probably due more to the coming towards the mid-end game thing that we're looking at. And doesn't like the bishop attacking. Would I do that differently at all? <clears throat> bishop attacking. Let's have a look at the suggestions that it's got here. It says rook e8. So bringing the rook here behind the bishop. It's got rook b8, rook b8. All right. And it's got a5. a5 pushing here. All right, so it definitely doesn't like that. But our idea, I think, obviously, is if they do take, then we do have a bit of space attacking the pawn here. But I suppose the knight is defending there. But it's not going to defend for long. We can push up. Okay, fair enough. Just wanted to get the bishop off the back. I could tell straight away just from the movement. And it doesn't like that, it's saying that's a mistake. In my head, I'm still thinking I'd still play that. I'd be feeling that these, you know, doing the rook move here, it's not impactive enough. All it's doing is supporting the bishop. Maybe it's supporting the pawn behind the bishop. So maybe something to look at there. This obviously is attacking a pawn that's defended by the king. So in my head, I'm thinking I don't really see what benefit that's going to have. It's going to be a more a longer term thing. Unless, of course, there's some attack lines, which I'm not seeing at this moment. So probably this rook move here to the e8 looks a little bit better because at least it's powering through and supporting the pawn here. So I can see that. I could work that into my mental Rolodex. Not going to get these positions ever again, but the concept um, should work for us. Okay, we grabbed. Obviously looking to target the pawn there, but they see that, so they push down. So then we look for the exchange. 
Yeah, it's got like a thumbs up for that one. All right. And they've got like a blunder. So obviously they've blundered their position a little bit. We grab. Uh, it's got a little bit of a question mark inaccuracy. All right. So I don't really see a problem with it, but let's see what it's saying. Uh, Rook takes F3. Oh, got a free pawn. And the bishop's protecting the rook. Oh, dear me. Yeah. I won't even say it's time pressure, but because it is a fast game, I'm just thinking, well, I'll just get the rook off the board. You know, looks fairly even, Stevens. We may be, we may be able to do something with the position. So the grab, grab. And this pawn is still free. Do we actually take it or not? Oh, we do take it. So we were aware of the pawn. But it's basically saying the move order was wrong. Saying this was probably better. So it's not point eight at the moment. Let's see what difference it makes once all of that has been done. No point six. Right, okay. So if we go back one, I said I wasn't gonna labour on it, didn't I? But um, not point seven. If they did take, take, not point eight. If it came and attacked the bishop, which probably is the normal thing to do, then it's gone one point one for us. Okay, All right. So it does did make a difference. So happy with that. Yeah, we may have seen that after that, but I think we saw this, and this is where we thought, well, if we take here, then even if he takes with the king, we can still get the pawn, but it's a move order thing. All right, good stuff. Yeah, so a few little little errors there already within this 75% thing, and this is only the first game as well. I'm hoping that these sort of things are going to help enhance me uh, going forward in the next batch of blitz games okay so we bring the rook down attacking the knight and okay so that's looking fairly advantageous for us at this moment and what did it say did it say g5 is an inaccuracy oh that's not for me that's for them okay so we grab the knight because it's got no protection on so at that point it's looking fairly advantageous for us after that point so i don't need to do any more okay good stuff Good bits of learning there. So we'll go on to the next one. All right, so let's click the next game just to have a look and see. All right, yep, so never mind the win. I want to look at the quality of the games. That's what we're doing these exercises for. As we've said before, it's not a rating ladder climb at all. It's really just like trying to improve the quality of the game. You know, I'm, I'm not really a short player player. But I've been playing it for many years now. I'm just trying to improve the quality of these games. So let's go. Are we in the analysis mode? Won't do a game review. I think it's just a straightforward analysis. So I don't think we'll get any fancy um, arrows or anything like that. We might do. I'm not sure. So shall I click this and does it do something? Yep. All right. There. So we played white and we pushed through. Let's just see. Make sure that the gauge bar is working. Yes, it's moving a little bit. So we grab the pawn, keeping it all pretty straightforward, taking the queen off the board, all simple stuff. They leave a pawn, but they can get that pawn back. But um, we go for a fork on their king and their rook. So that's looking like we're gaining a bit of material. It's looking a bit frantic. We've grabbed and gathered quite a bit of material for free. Okay, so... Just supporting pieces, just capturing the bishop. I think I'm fairly happy with the movement of this particular game. Yeah, so nice position. Yeah, excellent. So no problems there at all. Just kept the team working together quite nicely, supporting pieces and basically taking the opportunity to attack um, the weak areas around their king and the weak spaces around the king. So that was okay. So... Click this and then back. So that was number two. There's about maybe a hundred or something. So I think if we try and get through this page at least. Yeah, we are on page two, are we? Yeah. Just get through a few of them and um, 
try and work out a percentage of what we think. We, we're going with the 75% at this moment in time. doesn't feel too bad at the moment. The first one needed some work on in terms of position, targeting, move order. And the second one, pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's just jump in. Let's just click the analysis. Playing as black. And see if there's any major dips. Yeah, this game felt a little bit weird. I can tell straight away from the position of the pawns already. Um, I'm not really a fan of this type of position. And I really probably should try and avoid getting into this position. It's just, obviously, the opponent... It, I'm led by the opponent because they're playing as white. But I'm somehow I feel like my response isn't the best. Okay, so we'll just see. And we take the pawn off. We take the pawn off there. Feeling a little bit better. Queen comes through. Taking and going for the exchange. Mm, yeah. Okay, still a bit sketchy. Yeah. It's not really a nice position, really, for us. But does the opponent take advantage of that? They don't actually take advantage of their position. Yeah, so at this point here, it's um, drawish. But during the game feeling, well, I'm a little bit hemmed in. White square bishop's not out. My rook's not really going to be able to own the file here, as you can see. So that's a big concern for us. But from that moment, it didn't look like they took advantage of the potential for owning that file with the rook. And taking it a little bit further. So they lost a bit of material through those exchanges. So we've now got a bishop and a knight and a rook. So I think we can rest easy now. And that should be pretty straightforward. Don't need to hammer that one home. Okay, so that was... Um, opponent error on that one really so we'll come through here so fairly happy with that that's not too bad and we're on to number four yes so just click here so yeah as normal just don't be looking at oh well you've won um that doesn't mean anything to me it's the quality of the win that's what we want to try to establish so far i don't think we're doing too bad and it's three minute game with zero increment on. So again, that's um, quite good. Analysis. Playing as black, nice one. I do prefer playing as black. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, so they grabbed, grabbed, grabbed. Brought the bishop out. And attacked, attacked, attacked. Okay, look, looking pretty drawish at the moment, feeling drawish. Can we take advantage of the position? We're owning the file with the rook. Again, basic, basic stuff, but it does help. Doesn't like that rook move up, but it's not majorly. So, oh, 1.6, attacking the pawn. Queen's gone down. Okay, yeah, cool. And then we go for the finish. Excellent. Okay. Blindsided from the opponent's side. Okay, so that's a, another straightforward one. I've uh, forgotten what we're on now. One, two, three, four, five. That must have been five, wasn't it? No, that was... Yeah, so we're on this one. Okay. Let's analyze. Playing as white here. So just driving through, attacking, taking. Yep, and bringing that back. See what it's looking like. Okay, grabbing. See, this type of position I, in my head, I always think, well, it is pretty dangerous for us as well. Because if they get to castle on the queen's side, then they do have the power base ready to focus down on our king side. So we grab 
and then the bishop grabs and that's given us a major advantage because their rook is not got any defense on so we do actually take the rook okay pretty straightforward stuff that one and i forgot what to do back there we go all right just have a look at the picture so it's not that one it's this one let's have a quick shifty again analyze Playing as black, all right, pushing through the center. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm getting used to this type of pattern work from white in this type of opening. I used to be quite fearful of it because they had all this battery and attacking this pawn at some point, and now I wasn't able to get castled, but I think I've got used to the rhythm of it a bit. So we castle queen up. So white is got like it's 1.4. So they've got advantage in this position. So this is another one where potentially the, you know, the opponent has let slip the advantage and we've taken advantage of the position. So it's something to be mindful of in that. Okay, we've got to really, you're not going to be always ahead in the evaluation you know, when you do your evaluation and look at the computer side of things, because especially if you're playing as black, you, you start second. So you're yeah, trying to balance yourself out and work with what the opponent's actually doing. So they're always one step ahead. So it's like, it's nice to be able to be able to claw back the advantage. Not that I had any worries during the game. I don't think in this, the position looks okay for us. Like I said, we've got used to this um, battery type thing. Now this really either needs to change or they need to capture or do something because it's just staying there and doing nothing. Whereas we've got a bit of an advantage being able to attack the pawn, make our way up towards their king type situation. So they do take. So then they move their king into the castling position. So now we're looking to go for a cheapy. Yeah but it's 0 0.52 white, but their advantage has diminished because it was one point something. And they don't see it, but it's not a checkmate, but it's a check on the king, which makes them feel a little bit uncomfortable. So we do put a check on, and then we're looking to claw back some space and maybe try and potentially put some hurt onto the king somehow. Queen comes down looking for an exchange, but the queen doesn't have any... Um, protection on it so we can take so this game here was really more about the opponent losing that advantage that they had and us taking advantage of um the weaknesses towards the king area yeah like that one like that this one okay and let's just go here And let's have a look at this analysis. Playing as white, pushing through the center. Just jump through, see how this opening's working for us. Yeah. I do like this pawn maneuver. It's just, you, I know that it's gonna get taken off the board. You know, the head of the snake usually just gets taken off the board. It's doing a good job blocking here and here. Uh, in the recent over the board game that I played, I had done this a little bit too early and um, paid the price positionally. So I was on the back foot for the rest of the game and was lucky enough to get a draw out of the game, but still got to be mindful of this pawn push thing because it kind of loses tempo in developing other pieces as well. So we castle, bring the bishop through. Let's just keep looking. So it looks like we're maintaining some advantage somewhere. Nice position with the bishop. So the king's doing a little bit of a walk. Putting checks on the king now. Looking to exchange the queen off. Taking the queen off. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it looks like we've gathered quite a bit of material and position play as well. Advantages for us. 4.1 at the minute. Don't know whether we maintain that though. Let's see. So just grabbing pieces that are unprotected. You can see what the opponent's trying to do, though. 
keep that pressure towards our king, get this pawn pushed down with the bishop and the rook. And the rook. Bringing the knight into the game, capturing. Okay, it's not done a major dip at the minute. So we're targeting, just trying to get a squish on the king. King's moved off the line. Okay, so it's not dipping for us at the minute, so it's still plusing. And looks like they resigned or something there. All right, excellent. Yeah, so the gauge bar was more on our side in this particular game. So advantages throughout, I suppose, with the dishevelment of their king's position. Okay, and this one. And analysis, let's have a look at this one. Plain as black. Okay, so push through the center. Got to check the gauge bar on this one. I probably made a massive error in this one. So pushing through, nice there. Smaller piece attacking a higher piece. Feeling a little bit congested here, but feeling like I was managing it. Bishop came, tax, there, king comes down. The magic of their pawns, king takes. So still feeling kind of comfortable, but at the same time thinking, well, you know, they've got bishop that, um, coming around here, you know, and they've got the queen coming towards here. They've got the rook towards our king area. What are my pieces doing? But I didn't feel too bad about it. Let's go. And then we brought the bishop through, attacking their bishop, and that's probably, as it's showing, maybe the wrong move. Hmm, okay, let's go back one. And what it is it's just suggesting? Knight d4, it doesn't look like it's getting into the game. Because I'm feeling I'm getting squished, but maybe I'm being a bit too previous because the current position is it's only 0 0.43, which is neither here nor there. So when I've done this, and then they capture... I can't take it back with the pawn because the rook is there. So even if I take with the queen, then the pawn can't take it back because of the rook. So, yeah, that's a bit of a knee-jerk reaction thing, trying to avoid the squish. So that's, um, that's a bad move. It's a bad move. But, you know, we live and learn from it. So the knight coming through... Yeah, knight coming through would have been better. Bishop saying take g8. What's this? So it's taking g8, the knight. Okay, well, I'm not going to play against the computer, but uh, okay, the knight moving up. Then they say that. So it's still even, Stephen type thing. Does the rook take or the king take? Saying the king because it's taking itself off of there okay that would have been smoother and manageable yeah it's just looking at the rhythm of the pieces you know i must have had a blind side and thought oh my king's not there or i could manage it somehow so it was a bit of a blind spot error all right i think i can wear that one yeah brilliant good learning curve there simple a simple mistake caused a catastrophic ending brilliant so just go backwards and we're nearly at the end of this page so this session will will finish after we've done this one analyze analyze plain as black let's push through the queen comes down anything major let's let it think a little bit let's bring the knight across let's see tucking tucking not feeling too bad about this at the minute, but this is not good. Oh, look at that. It's got my queen. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's terrible. Oh, and they didn't spot it. Oh, dear. That's, oh, my gosh. Look at that. Yeah, this is that 75% thing, you know. It's good to look back on your games. Wow. Dear me. And then we take the bishop off the ball for not taking us. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I probably would have been screaming at the um, at the screen.
couldn't believe I put it there. I was going for the fancy attack on the king. As you can see, it's very basic, you know. Oh, yeah, let's go and get that. All the while, he had a ninja bishop here. So this was um, the opponent's error, not seeking the advantage that they'd gained from my error. So the stink start capturing. So they're down a minor piece. We're just putting checks on now. So I don't think we need to do any more now. I think it's just a matter of keeping on putting pressure on. Excellent. So key point to note, watch where you put your queen. Interesting exercise. And the last one. Playing as white. Analyze. Oh no, playing as black. What am I on about? Okay. Let's jump in. Let's see what we've got. Okay, that's all pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, yeah. So slight advantage in the opening. Yeah, I know for a fact, and this one, when bringing the bishop back, I'm thinking, oh, I'm not getting ownership of the file with the rooks, really. Bishops off the on the back. So during this type of game concept, I'm thinking I'm too slow. You know, I'm going backwards. I'm, I'm not really, and I'm looking at their position. I'm thinking they've got the knights out already, the queens out in the game. But the computer's showing that we're not doing too bad. So we take, yeah, so glad to take that because it's like, well, okay, let's free up a bit of space because he's got two knights already developed. Let's get them out of the way. Queen takes. Not sure what that situation was all about. So obviously from that point on, it's a bit special and that's pretty straightforward. Now we've got a bit of material that we can just play with. So brilliant. So nice exercise there. The 75% is for the current games that we've done. It's mixed with quite a lot of my own personal errors in terms of the move order of things, the position of my pieces. And again, over what's the word over fretting on the position especially in the opening when really i don't need to because more times out of 10 my position is either favorable or it's equal to the opponents just because i haven't got my pieces out um into action doesn't mean that my position or the evaluation or analysis is going to be bad it's just a matter of making sure that i've got my key space is covered and my key piece is covered as best possible. And once that's done, the opponent is probably thinking the same thing. They need to get their pieces out, need to get them into action. And there needs to be some sort of um, resolution to that type of um, gameplay. So 75% is, for me, is still there. And what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to just do like a, a number count of the games that we've just done. So I've done like a, a qualitative, the quality of the games assessment, and then I'm going to do a number crunching um, assessment of the games as well. So after finishing the evaluation of all of the Blitz games that I've played so far, which is a total of 60, and basically there were 15 losses which comes around about to 9% nine, 9 and then two, draw, two draws, it's like 1%. So the physicality of it is that we're working quite nicely with a, a good percentage, a good resulting performance of wins, which is what we were trying to focus on from last year's over the board type um, results. You know, um, so basically we said we need to come try and convert the draws into wins as best possible. And so just leading off of that, we're trying to focus on how we can improve the draw mentality. And we'll accept the draws if there's draws there, but we're trying to break through that draw mentality. So we're practicing these shorter games. I'd take them with a pinch of salt, obviously, because we're really long play player game. Um, type things but if we can bring it into this exercise maybe it can help improve the quality of our games in the shorter games as well
So all in all, at this moment in time, the qualitative side of the games, the report that we've got at the minute, with the, I'm still sticking with the 75% where there's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done in terms of my own blunders in the games, which the opponent doesn't take advantage of, the errors that I make in the games, like what the inaccuracies, if you like. They're not big, massive blunders, but inaccuracies. Uh, trying to improve those a little bit. And again, the opponent not taking advantage of those smallest of inaccuracies. So things like that um, make up the 75% where I'm thinking still need to, to improve it, like, to try and get it down to at least 50%, you know, so I'm not greedy. I can try and get it down to at least 50% where we're not making as many inaccurate moves, not making wrong move orders. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're not, missing opportunities that we could take as well and I'm not a tactics man so it's um, looking at the at looking at the position and seeing whether or not we can actually improve the position without having to work so hard trying to go for a simple end game when really there was probably a better move you could have done and finished the game earlier but we're not looking at quick and dirty tactics here we're looking at improving the position on the board when I've looked at all of these games, there were quite a few um, positions where basically I could have pushed a better manoeuvre rather than dragging it out into a, 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 a you know a, a long end game. So little tiny things like that help to improve the quality of my game and gives me a good focus and I'm keeping it linked with what we've done last year and hopefully bringing it into this year and maybe hopefully improving the over-the-board games that um, I get to play throughout this next season as well.